Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like it o'clock. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and this is my bro, B. Boric. And we are B. Pow, bringing you fine picks daily. Today, we're going to be doing Major League, well, baseball picks. We'll be doing all those sports, but we're going to be doing Major League Baseball picks for this one. Thank you for subscribing and all the views and coming over to Patreon and, and uh, following us there. Much appreciated for all of you for doing that sort of thing. Helps kick the ass of the algorithm, don't you know, for YouTube. So we can bring this fine programming to more people in the land. Um, okay, well, we are now in the last three days. We, we weren't tabulating really our, we were kind of going on percentages and overall we were like 65%. Patreon people said we'd like a little better uh, um, record, showing of the record. So we're starting to keep an actual record of everything that we're doing. Uh, and we are 13 and 5. I believe we're up like 7.5 units in the last three days. So we're bringing in some pretty good scratch. Uh, again, for our greatest picks, for our best picks that we have for you, highly recommend you head over to Patreon, Patreon app and uh, get involved there where, uh, like I said, a lot. But we are going to give you leans and other picks, and hopefully they'll be able to help you with your leans and picks today. So Major League Baseball we're getting into today. And uh, i got a small shorten my screen here. And uh, we're starting with the first game this today, the Pirates and the Reds. And uh, we're going to have to go on a um, side on this one because we have a play on the total. So Pirates versus Reds, what do you got on this, Joe? Uh, uh, I would I lean towards the Reds because Red. they're definitely, definitely better than better. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. but they're not the most successful team this year. They're actually one of the disappointing teams in the league as they should have been. A lot better than they are, um, but they started turning a headwind here and looking better lately. So that would definitely keep me leaning towards the Reds as they build to now uh, go into next season sitting pretty pretty. They're six and four in the last ten. They still have a minus nineteen run differential though, which is not very good, obviously. So uh, they're a team that started off so bad and then had to recover. They're starting to recover. So could they sneak in and potentially make it with how the NL teams are doing 100%? Because the AL team, who's an eighth, is above 500 by a couple games now. The NL team, who's an eighth, is below 500 for the final playoff spot. So in order for them to keep doing that, they're going to have to keep the momentum going. That's why I would lean Reds in this one. And also because the Pittsburgh Pirates are so downtrodden. In a 60-game season, their run differential right now is a minus 80. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, poor offense, poor defense, poor pitching, poor everything for the Pirates. Uh, yeah. Um, I, like I said, we're more leaning towards the uh, we're more leaning towards the the total here. And you can find that on our Patreon. So I, I, I would highly recommend you go there. But uh, I don't think you're getting all that much juice from Cincinnati on that game either. So you can't do it if you wish. <laughs> Add it into a parlay or possibly uh, might work out for you. Um, okay, Marlins, Red Sox. We don't have an actual play on that. Um, very interesting game here. We have uh, Red Sox have a rookie pitcher coming in. Um, I liked your lean. We talked about this before this. On because uh, I was saying you know with the rookie pitcher maybe the Marlins, but you had a pretty cool lean on that joke. Tell everybody about it. Well, Boston, their team Dahlbeck of course came up, provided a little bit of a fire energy stretch. They won a couple games since he's been in, and then games that Verdugo. I mean, he has the swagger. Anytime he gets a key hit, they seem to find a way. They're just a team that seemed to this year, no matter. If uh, they just kind of run on their adrenaline, that's the only time they've ever won games when there's been something happen where your pitcher starts the game striking out the side or somebody comes in and you get a great defensive play by somebody or you get that one great hit that the guy starts doing the celebration at second base to get everybody going. The only time Boston has kind of found a way to win this year 
is through their adrenaline pump. And other than that, they're, again, a team that's been disappointing. They should be significantly better than they are. They have been better in their last 10. They're even in their last 10. And they won last game. But they also have one of the worst run differentials in baseball at a minus 72. So they're looking to obviously look a little bit better in the home stretch to build on next season because that's the story of the Red Sox existence. They forget how to play baseball one year, and then the next year they'll probably make the postseason. So <laughs> that's just the story of Boston. Uh, but with this Hope kid, he's a really good pitcher. He got drafted in the end of the first round a few years ago out of Mizzou. And um, he. a lot of young guys have kind of just stepped in this year and pitched pretty well. He definitely has a chance to do that. If he comes in like Ian Anderson kind of did against the Yankees and establish himself, or Devi Garcia when he came up for the Yankees themselves, then that's going to be an adrenaline pool, or Pearson before he got injured for the Blue Jays. That's going to be an adrenaline pool for the Red Sox. And if and I believe with them, how they have been operating this year, the only games they have won when it's like, oh, you have that big momentum swing they haven't ever found a way to win really obviously having 17 wins so i think with him he can be able to help them over that bump and they're also playing a team that's going to be riding high potentially going oh we're facing a kid in his first start we're going to get this because they just beat the phillies in five of seven well if you come in thinking we're riding high, we're going to get this on a guy's debut, you're probably not. So the, that's the other side of it. You have to, as the Marlins, you're going to have to come in and realize you're facing a very good pitcher. You don't get picked in the first round for no reason. It's, that's a, a good prospect that's up a little bit maybe before. They would have liked to have him up, but he's definitely close if not ready. And so he's a guy... And I have confidence in, and I think he'll pitch well. I do think Alcantara has a chance to also pitch well, but again, momentum with Boston is the only way they've won games this year, when there's just that one play or that pitcher that strikes out the side and it gets the click going and Verdugo hits a double or a homer or Dalbeck does something, Devers who keeps doing his thing. One of those guys. So I think they have a good chance to potentially steal this one. So I wouldn't put heavy money on it if you have extra money i'd put it on it because you don't want to take a high risk if you don't have extra money on a team that has 17 win but if you have extra money this is a good pitcher to bank on in his debut yeah um you swayed me on that the more i thought the uh, after thinking about it sometimes uh my plays are a little linear and but um, like with you with baseball, you you seem to be able to capture the energy a little better than I do when it comes to baseball, sort of like me with hockey. Um, so that's why it's good that we rebound off of each other. That's not a bad play. I might throw a tiny bit on that. Just to, sometimes I like to play a little uh, scratch just to root for the kid because he said he's also going to be giving a uh, uh, hundred dollars to every for every strikeout to charity in that game is that right to a uh pitchers for adoption charity yeah. there you go so i might throw a little bit on it just to root for him to get a lot of strikeouts for that game excellent good character kid by the sounds of it uh okay let's look at uh the rays versus the nationals pretty straight play here yeah that would especially because uh the rays are a team they usually use an opener. So using an opener for the Rays is nothing out of the ordinary. They don't, if the guy pitches three innings, great. If he pitches four innings, fantastic. Don't matter really for Tampa. Normally they put in their bullpen, they match it so well, Kevin Cash. So Curtis, no matter where they put him, he has one other opening and he pitched well in that. He's 3 and 0, uh, has 18 strikeouts, so only two walks, and he gives up less than a hit per inning with a 1 5 3 RA, where Anibal Sanchez is the is uh, limiting his walks okay this year? He's 30 and t- 30 for 12 with K's to walk ratio, but he is just struggling in other facets with a 6.81 um, and then a 2 and 4 record. So, yeah, that, that's definitely not just the fact that the Nationals are one of the most disappointing teams this year after winning the World Series. 
this match, a lot of the matchups today involve good teams against very disappointing teams, I'm realizing. Uh, so I would definitely lean uh, Tampa here. Yeah, throw that in a parlay. Not getting much juice on it. Uh, possibly on the RL, maybe, you think? Yeah, that's a game you could do it on because Tampa definitely should not be close uh, with their bullpen and with how Curtis is pitching and should be able to give them two or three good innings before they have to go to that bullpen. Compared to Washington, they might get one or two out of Sanchez with how he's been pitching. So, Excellent. Okay, um, now we, have, we are going to Mets versus Philadelphia, and we have a play on the side here. So... Um, Though we won't be talking about that, but do you, do you, is there any over under here? I don't really like any over under here. Do you? I don't really like it because Arietta normally pitches this year, he's pitched good against the Mets, but not great against other people. And Porcello's inconsistent against the Phillies, so it's kind of a wash type. Maybe it could go over, maybe it couldn't go over type thing. So I wouldn't really mess around with that. Okay, now a very interesting game that we don't have a play on at all. But uh, I'm just going to find it interesting, mostly because I'm a Jays fan. Uh, Yankees versus Blue Jays. Um, let's look at possible uh, sides and over-unders on that game, Joe. Uh, Taewon Walker in for uh, the Jays. That's kind of why I'm interested in this game. Uh, I really like how he's been pitching this year. Yeah, yeah, Walker's been pitching really well. He's also going up against Garcia, who's been pitching really well. So you have a very good youngster against a guy that's starting to turn it back to before his injuries, unfortunately, uh, uh, bit him a little bit in Walker. So it's nice to see him be able to kind of find it again and find it big time this year. So that's going to be a close um, game. I would say you definitely could play the under in that game. That would be something I would lean towards with the way those two have been pitching. The youngsters, one of the better rookies in baseball right now, and Debbie Garcia, and then obviously Walker's pitching like the Walker of old this season. So yeah. you could definitely lean the under. Now, as in terms of the line, with how the Yankees have been hot recently and the Blue Jays have still been doing their thing, that game's almost a wash. So I don't know if I would even lean anybody. Yeah. Well, I'm going to lean the Jays because I'm a Jays fan, but that's yeah. the only reason. <laughs> and as far as the under is concerned, the reason why I really haven't put a play out for the for Patreon for that is they've both been hitting so well. So even uh, with the great the pitching. pitching, yeah, maybe they'll find a way to hit them. Yeah. They'll find a way to hit them right now. So that's the only reason. Otherwise, yeah, I was looking at the under for that as well. Now we have a play that's pretty much um, – it's to me, it's a wash in just about everything, but maybe you'll see something different. Uh, the Royals versus the Tigers. Uh, I mean, if I'm gonna, I mean, is Duffy even still pitching? Because right now, it only has what's his face announced for him. No, I have Duffy. You do have Duffy, okay? Yeah, um. Because I only have one of them announced online for some reason. But if if Duffy's pitching, he's been pitching better lately. You could give a slight lean to Kansas City. Other than that, I mean, I wouldn't even try anything with that game. That game is pretty much a wash. Because I don't have Duffy on my thing anymore, so I don't know if he's still pitching or not. Well, I hope, yeah, maybe it's changed so that we yeah. probably avoid that. Anyways, I, don't, I know that... Uh, I'm not very confident in Matthew Boyd being sent out for the Tigers. I think I would probably lean the Royals here. I think the Royals have been getting the best out of their lineup compared to the Tigers this year. So I'd say they're running on a much better energy, uh, in which case I would probably go with the Royals. Uh, not a bad – I mean, if you're leaning that Yeah, well, way, the Royals are also 6-4 and four with a – with a uh, six-game winning streak. So uh, they, they they probably have a better – now, unless if some random person pitches like we should. That's the, that's the thing. They might end up having to put in somebody that isn't very good if Danny Duffy's not pitching. So that does yeah. change the uh, degree of what's going on. So um, you kind of have to see what happens here. 
This is a big question mark, a uh, little too many question marks for me. That's why I kind of avoided that game. Um, Atlanta Braves Bal- versus Baltimore Orioles. We don't have anything on that game. Uh, it's not much. You're not getting much for the Braves on this. And uh, pretty uh, pretty uh, un- unpredictable uh, matchup as far as pitching, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think if you're going to lean anybody there and you have extra money, bet on the Orioles. You yeah. know, has been struggling. Eichelman's had his best season by far, uh, who the Phillies gave to the Orioles. Uh, thank you, Matt Glintick. Um, so, uh, that he's been having his best season there. Actually, has looked like he could be a solid fourth or fifth starter. And uh, they've been a better team. Uh, they're 5-5 five five in their last 10, but they've been a better. They're only at a minus five run differential. And if anybody told me that they thought the Orioles would almost be at an even run differential coming into their stretch of the season, I would think they're nuts. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's worked out well for them. They might even be able You figure if they go on a run, they could easily even their run differential if they start winning a couple games again because minus five is obviously not that hard to uh, bring back up in a couple weeks. Uh, so, yeah, I would definitely lean the O's because I like Eichelman more than how you know it hasn't been able to find his tick yet. He's just really looked like he's kind of out of sorts, not confident yet in his stuff at the major league level. And that's that, that happens with young guys. I still think he has a chance to be a good three through five option for them. It just takes time with some guys. Not everybody can come in like Ian Anderson and Debbie Garcia and Steven Strasburg's of the world uh, going back some or Kershaw when he first comes. Not everybody comes in and is dominant right away. So uh, it's just, I think with him it's just going to take a bit of time, but I don't think going up against a guy that seems like he has found his confidence in the majors this year and he was searching for it prior to this year and Eichelman is a good matchup for him. So that's why I would say you can lean against the or lean for the Orioles there and against the Braves. So. Excellent. Uh, Brewers versus Cardinals, and I don't believe we have anything on that. So um, this seems like a fairly straight play to me. Uh, if you're going to play it at all, how about you? Yeah, I didn't want to do that one because. Uh, Anderson's been so up and down this this year. He's pitched like a good four or five, but then in a couple games this year, uh, when you go back and look at his line, he's pitched more like a three as well. So that's why I was thinking of doing maybe a uh, over or something for that game because of him. But then when I looked at his game logs, I was like, man, that's not really a good play. So... I mean, because normally he was a guy that might give up at most four, but he's going to keep you in the game. And with Jack Flaherty on the other end, you don't want to play an over in that situation. So that's why I definitely did not put that in. In terms of who you want to lean towards, I think I just gave that a hint by saying with Jack Flaherty on the other end. <laughs> that would be that would be who you want to lean towards. I don't think it, it should be set in your mind, oh, Cardinals are winning this game, Cardinals are winning this. No. <laughs> that's who you could lean toward. The Cardinals are still a team that's now at 500 uh, because of their, they're still making up games. They're in second. Uh, I wouldn't say they're uh, uh, hung ho. Oh, they're definitely going to win this game type thing. Cause they're four and six in their last few games. The Brewers are also four and six in their last 10 games. Both of these teams are kind of playing at the same clip right now. So, yeah, I thought a decent play would be Brewers' first five. I'm not really a fan of their bullpen uh, in the situation they're in right now. Might be a good play, uh, but uh, probably get some decent juice on that. And, uh, yeah, not a bad play. Um, that's that's where I would go if I went anywhere on that. Um, like you said, they're, they're, pretty, they're a pretty even matchup, so – uh, when doing that, when going into situations like that, it's probably best to take the underdog and on a, on a relative coin flip. We've, we mentioned that quite a bit if you're going to play it at all. Um, this has been a good series. Next, ga- next one, next game, uh, Twins versus White Sox. Yeah. I mean, 
the Twins and White Sox game, that was a very good game. Uh, yesterday, uh, the White Sox, the Shy Sox were able to win three to one. Uh, those games have better chances of being unders, I would say, than overs because you have teams that have a good bullpen, even if their starter kind of forgets what's going on. But you also have uh, Dunning, who's pitching good so far um, this season and uh, only 20 innings pitched so far, but those 20 innings have been very efficient and going well for him. He's only given up a homer. Uh, one homer in uh, those innings. And he's a guy that um, is a guy that they have confidence in. I like his stuff. Uh, I've been watching the White Sox a lot because they're a team I kind of pay attention to for the one site I write for. Um, and uh, I do like the stuff in that kid. Granted, I also love Dobnik, who, for a fun fact, was an Uber driver before he, the Twins brought him back into baseball. Uh, and now he has 6-3, and 3-6-1, three, three, and a good career pitcher for the last year and a half. So, Great story line there for him as well. Um, so both of these guys also look good on the mound with the nice show glasses, you know. Uh, so uh, I would say that game's almost a wash because it's just two teams that are very impressive, fun to watch, know how to pitch and know how to hit. So like one game, it could be they do get to the good pitching. And then it could be like last game, three to one. You see great pitching from both ends. So these teams going up against each other, it's just a battle of two juggernauts in their division right now. And yeah. obviously that division, realistically, I mean, they're not even the only juggernauts in that division because Cleveland's playing uh, really solid. They just screwed themselves over because they're on a six-game losing streak. Otherwise <laughs> they would be in a much, in a much, uh, much better spot uh, because going three and seven in your last ten, is not beneficial, but that still nonetheless has them at 26 and 21. So they have three teams in that division that have a chance to do something in the postseason, but the Twins and White Sox are the teams that primarily do. So I would say that game's pretty close to a wash. Uh, But uh, maybe you could do maybe in the first five you could pick the can you pick an under in the first five yeah you can do that yeah That's i would say one. you could you could do that yeah under first five would be my play there too i was just yeah. gonna say that we think <laughs> exactly the same <laughs> uh rangers astros uh the rangers astros um well you really have two disappointing teams there not just one Got the Rangers that opened their stadium that everybody had high hopes for. They're 17 and 30. Uh, you have the Astros that everybody thought, even through all the uh, mud and dirt thrown at them, uh, would be able to, because of their team on paper, have a good productive season. Well, they're second in the West, but they have a, but I mean, they're 23 and 24. So <laughs> not really the best. Not really the best. Uh, record you're second in the west because other than the a's everybody else in the division is just meh so you got the rising seattle mariners who have actually impressed this year they're definitely first of all when you have a minus 44 run differential and you're almost 500 that's just impressive in itself almost (laughs) so so uh yeah um and then you have the astros who they're just a hard team to figure out because uh, they're two and eight in their last 10. They kind of went on a run for Ben. You're like, okay, maybe they finally blocked out all the other stuff, which should be easier this year. Cause the only people that can annoy you is the other team. There's no fans there, yeah. so, but that doesn't seem to have helped anything. So that's why I have trouble giving any leans towards the Astros this year, because every time I try to tell somebody you should put something on the Astros, it don't work. Uh, yeah. The other side of it is Kyle Cody is another guy, took a little bit to get up to the majors, but he's at 6'7 coming at you. Uh, in his five games so far, two of them have been starts. Um, he has 11 strikeouts. His problem is control. He just can't. He walks a few too many people, but... He still has a .93 ERA even through walking eight people in limited innings. So if the Astros are able to 
jump on him, I would lean ever so slightly to him, but he just seems like a guy that never gets phased even when he walks people. So that's going to be tough. I would say what you could do in this game, since you're quitty and him are pitching pretty well, I would lean maybe, an, again, an under for the first five because uh, your quitties pitched pretty well this year, and Kyle Cody has always tightened roped himself whenever he gets into trouble out of it. So that wouldn't be too bad of a play. That's the only thing. Other than that, I wouldn't even try to touch that game. Yeah, I was saying uh, a lot of people thought it was crazy, but I was saying that the Astros were going to have a bad year this year because I really do think that was going to the whole situation was going to affect the players. I think there's a, a split, maybe not even a split. There's an element of shame in that room. It, it just is that. Like especially if you were a player, just imagine being traded to the Astros. <laughs> like, yeah. are you thinking, oh wow, I'm going to be able to put? you know, that emblem on my chest. No, you're thinking, oh, shit, right? Like, do I got to be part of this nonsense? Like, that's that's kind of what I was – yeah. Anyways, that's what I thought about that. Uh, okay, let's go Indians and the Cubs. A uh, pretty interesting uh, pitching matchup here. Yeah. Um, Carrasco and Darvish is definitely a good pitching matchup. Uh, Yu's obviously pitching like a Cy Young winner, and Carlos Carrasco's pitching good this year, too. Obviously, the Indians just couldn't figure out a way to win half of his games because normally you don't have a 312 and a 129 whip, and you're two and four. But yeah. you know, th- things know. happen. Um, so due to the logic of how the Indians can't figure out how to win his games, I would definitely lean towards the Cubs. Uh, where it seems like Carrasco's bitten by the Cole Hamels bug, where when he was here in Philly a bit, it's like, yeah, I'm doing good, guys. I love how I'm doing, but then nobody figures out how to win for him. So uh, that's unfortunately what's going on for Cookie right now. I actually thought there was a chance he would be moved because he's in his 30s now, and they kind of seem like they love having their young, successful pitching have a lot of room to grow. So he's definitely a guy. I think that could be, again, that could be a good play for under in your first uh, five innings again, potentially lean in there. Uh, For the overall under, it it would depend because the Cubs are a team that we know um, when they really get going can whack the ball around. Otherwise, they're about 18th in the league. But it. I would say the first five is the only thing I would play there, really. Again, it's a, it's a, uh, you could lean uh, Cubs a little bit because of Cookie, but again, it's too good because, of, and it's not because, not because of Cookie, because of how the Indians play behind Cookie. Um, so that's the only thing. I, I, that's a game that I was looking at, and I'm like, you can't really put anything on this game because, like, the the Cubs are been playing well. Darvish, they've won most of his games. But Carrasco's pitched well enough to win to be really four and two instead of two and four. So uh, eventually, usually that balances out. So that's why that game is hard to touch around. And also, eventually, you think the Indians are going to balance out and stop losing. So there's also there's also that caveat to it. He's a good guy to have on the mound as a 32 year old veteran that just knows how to pitch and isn't a thrower that obviously can kind of end your bump in the road here. He's one of those guys you want to have on the mound to end your bump in the road. And also, he's one of those guys that normally when he's going up against the best on the other end, he's an adrenaline pitcher. He's always been that way. You're probably going to – usually you see his best performance is going up against a Darvish-esque guy on the other end. So – Excellent. Uh, I would agree. Under first five would be, if I'm going to make a play on that game, that's probably what I would do. Uh, don't really lean to the side at all. Our next game, we do have a play on the total so <clears throat> that we sent to our Patreon members. So we will only be going at the side if there is a side. I'm probably leaning to A's here. Who are you leaning for the uh, athletics versus Rockies? Um. Yeah, I would lean. I would still lean the A's. Uh, the A's have been a team that have found ways to win. Manaya also has, since coming back, 
uh, clicked it in a lot better and has looked a lot better. So, yeah, he he's in a good spot now. He's looked a lot better in his last few games, and I think uh, I don't see any reason to think that's not going to continue for him. Uh, so, I would definitely lean the A's there because Manaya seems to have clicked it back in. Uh, it is going to be a fun pitching matchup, though, to watch the uh, young right-hander for Colorado, Sanzatella, who continues to get better on um, pitch against Manaya, who has continued to get better um, since coming back from some of his injuries. That's the only – Manaya's is a great pitcher. He's just been slowed, similar to Walker, by just unfortunate injuries. So now it seems like that's starting to – He's starting to figure out how to pitch again and have full confidence in what he's throwing, where it seemed like his injuries, similar to how Walker was prior to this year, who's now in the Blue Jays, obviously, Taylon Walker, was not as confident in himself, it seemed, because of his past injuries, where now it seems like he figured out how to be confident in himself again and not worry about getting injured. So that, that that's usually, and that's very understandable. If you've been banged up, you're going to, you're not, I mean, it's just human to worry about getting injured again. So now that he's kind of figured that out, I think he's going to keep cruising. And that'll be a fun game to definitely watch. I recommend that. It also says it's on FS1 for anybody in the state. So I would definitely recommend uh, watching that one. Yeah, I like I said, I I I lean the A's, but I, we didn't put a pick in on it. Uh, beside for for the side, we do have something for the total though. You might want to go check it out over Patreon. We also have something for the total for our next game, which I really want to watch. Uh, next game is uh, I think going to be maybe the game of the night. Uh, just two great pitchers uh, should be a lot of fun. We have something for the total here. What about? Do you have any? Can you pick a side on here? You talking about Dodgers and Drake? Oh, uh, Dodgers and San Diego Padres. Sorry, yeah. Um, I wouldn't pick a side because Zach Davies has been pitching phenomenal, and uh, Goslin's been a jack of all trades. He started quite a few games. He actually forced himself into the starting rotation. He wasn't projected to start many games at all. He was projected to be a spot starter. And then he's pitched amazing, so now he started five games and, and all of them has done pretty good. And he's also pitched out of the bullpen in one game as well and did really good in that outing. So uh, he's a guy that definitely just kind of knows how. He's a smart pitcher. He's not a guy that you could ever accuse of just kind of gunning it up there. So uh, neither is Zach Davies. <laughs> so uh, you got a lot of guys that have good stuff here. Davies is a uh, – who I believe is only 27. Yeah, so he's at his prime age right now. It seems like he's finally clicked it in fully. I mean, the dude does have a career 380 ERA because he had some solid years in Milwaukee. He was just more roller coaster. But he did. you definitely saw good potential and stuff. So no, I don't think uh, how good he's doing to the umph degree might be a surprise, but the fact that he's doing well and making a name for himself is not a surprise. Um, the fact that he's pitching like maybe an ace caliber guy could be a tit, a bit of a surprise. But, I mean, there's always guys like that every year, and those guys are the most fun to watch, especially when they're on a team that's nicknamed Slam Diego. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, pick a winner for that game. That game's a wash, uh, in my opinion. And then the, now who needs to win the game is the Dodgers. Because they're supposed to be the one of the best assembled teams in years. Meanwhile, the Padres have been behind them and right behind them pretty much the entire season. Yeah. But do I think they will? I don't know. Yeah, I'm I'm leaning the Padres here actually, but I wouldn't put a bet in it on it. Um, I just think the Padres, when it comes down to crunch time, seems to have shown the ability to um, play at a higher level than the Dodgers right now. I think the Dodgers might have been a little overconfident and uh, hopefully they've been knocked down a little bit enough to go, okay, we got we to gotta really start realizing that um, you're not going to win games on paper. You know, 
I, I just got that feeling with the Dodgers, um, where the Padres seem to be able to uh, maybe feel like a bit of an underdog as they're going into games. And uh, the effort just, there just seems to be more effort on the Padres side. That's yeah, from what I've watched so far. Uh, Diamondbacks versus Angels. We have nothing on this play. Uh, I a, take the Angels if you want. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty. Uh, you could lean the Angels just by how the Diamondbacks have done, but that's a wash game with two teams that have been uh, disappointing uh, this season. So, yeah, I don't really need to say much about that. I pretty much avoid that game altogether. Two teams that I don't even think either one of them thinks that they can win right now. Uh, Giants versus the Mariners, final game of the night. Um, have no play on this one either. Um, I've 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 been kind of a Mariners fan this year. I, I like their team for the future, so I'm kind of rooting for them. But uh, as far as a play on this one, I don't see really much juice to be had anywhere. Yeah, if I would lean anybody, I would lean uh, towards, I would say, um, the Giants because the Giants are still uh, in the – where the M's uh, don't have a tiebreaker. They're in ninth place right now. They would be out of the postseason. The Giants are still technically in the playoffs, so they're playing – to stay in that A spot after struggling against the Padres after going on that run before playing the Padres. So, and nobody blames them for struggling against the Padres, obviously. So, I believe I would lean more. I think Kapler's learned a lot from his time in Philadelphia and has kind of showed with the Giants this year with the energy he's brought to that team. And they're actually... Um, having they, they've been having competitive games in september which has been the achilles heel of the phillies uh so obviously i think people uh that right now they're on a three game losing but i mean they they've won or they've lost competitive games excuse me and uh have still battled in games and have just unfortunately not found a way to to get over the hump kind of so I still think the Giants are a team that have a chance. I mean, the Padres are going to – I think they're going to bounce back from the Padres. I don't think anybody expected them to beat the Padres in a series. They're a team that's the opposite of disappointing. They definitely outplayed what they're fan- – they basically are retooling, rebuilding their team, yet they could still make the playoffs. So that's definitely overperforming rather than underperforming. So – and so are the Mariners. They're a team that are retooling and rebuilding their team for the future – and still could make the playoffs. So those are two overperforming teams playing each other. So that's why I feel like that's kind of a wash still, but I could lean a little bit to the Giants because they, they are all, they're going to be pretty pissed off, I think, coming into this game after uh, getting beat up by the uh, Padres a little bit. And I think, unfortunately, for the Mariners and their fans, uh, who also lost last game and have, have a six and four record in the last ten, but like I said, have a minus forty four run differential. The Giants are only a minus three, I believe, and that's because of the recent um, bugaboo with the Padres. So uh, they can bring that right back up. That's why I would lean the Giants. Yep, I agree. I would lean the Giants there as well. If you're looking that way, you can as well. Thanks for listening to this fine program. I mean, every single game done, all pretty much every day. Um, we have our, again, over our Patreon, you'll find we're doing fantastic. We got our best picks there. Hopefully these leans helped you. This has been B. I'm Pearl of Wisdom. We are B, pal. Uh, check out steelflyers.com. Keep an eye on that website. It's going to be amazing. You can find all of our other work there. Uh, B has... Uh, Bork does a uh, Joe Bork does a lot of writing and all that. You can find all his information there. Go check it out. Have a great day, everyone. Enjoy the ball games and lots of love to you. <laughs>